Hey guys, Serac here. Today we'll be doing an overview of one of my Lord of the Ring maps, the Battle for Middle-earth. More specifically, the Dwarves Overview. In my previous videos, you can learn about the major guidelines of the map. Mordor, Elves, Goblins, Rohan, Isengard, Gondor, and the Evil Men Overviews. In this video, I will be focusing on Player 8, the Dwarves. At the start, Dwarves have their town center about halfway between the right and the top of the map in the Iron Hills. The Iron Hill houses one of their siege workshops. And uh, just to the top left of them, uh, you'll find Erebor, which houses their second um, siege workshop. It's actually worth noting that the Dwarves are the only player in this map to have more than one siege workshop. So make sure you make good use of them. Just below Erebor, you can go ahead and find the ruined city of Dale. Not so ruined, but the city of Dale. It also protects the entrance to Erebor. To the north of Dale, you can go ahead and find the city of Lake Town, which uh, houses the House of the Master, as well as Lake Town Fortress. There's a small path here through the bridges um, that do lead to Gundabad. I can guarantee you, you will be attacked from that side. To the far west of the map, you can go ahead and find the Blue Mountains, which holds most of Thorn's company, which will be released after minute 13, and you will also receive a villager. Lastly, to the north of the map, you will actually find the fortress of Fornost, which will uh, keep Angmar at bay. Um, for the heroes of the dwarves, um, they're quite numerous and some are quite important. So in the Iron Hills, you will start with uh, King Dane Ironfoot II. Uh, in Lake Town, you will start with Bard. Uh, and in the Blue Mountains, you will find Dwalin, Keely, Feely, and Thorn Oakenshield. In Rivendell, you'll also start with Loin and Gimli. Should any of the Dwarven hero dies, you will give uh, large buffs to the Goblin heroes, such as the Goblin King, Azog, and Balg. Should Bard die, you will give a significant buff to Smaug. Should King, Tain, King Dane die, you will, receive, um, you will actually give an HP buff to the Evil Men's player. Should Dwalin die, you will give a buff to Mordor. Should Thorin Oakenshield die, you will give a buff not only to the Goblins player, but also to the Mordor player. Um, should Kili, Fili, and Gloin die, they will weaken Thorin's company significantly, and Gloin will also weaken Should Gimli die, you will uh, weaken not only Legolas and Aragorn, but you will also stop any of the Fellowship quests that are available. It should be noted that if uh, Fornos does fall, not only does Mordor get an HP buff, uh, but the path in the mountains to the north from Gundabad to Agmar becomes usable, and the goblins can come from that side of the mountain pass as well. For the spawns that the Dwarven player gets, and they get quite a few, and some can get a little bit complex, uh, the easiest one to obtain is to research a few technologies. If the Dwarven player researches pikemen, blast furnace, plate mail armor along with elite berserk, chieftain, and berserk gang, most of the technologies that you'll pick up anyway, I hope, they will actually start the spawn for the DL soldiers. So they'll actually go ahead and have um, some incredibly strong pikemen from uh, DL. The next one is to renew the friendship with the elven player. So if the elven player ends up putting 20 samurais in Dale, and you as the dwarven player puts 20 zerks in Mirkwood, you will renew the friendship, and both sides will spawn some very strong units. Um, that will also start the spawn for the Dwarven Axe Throwers in the Iron Hills. If Thorin Company makes it to Erebor, so if you're able to go ahead and bring Gloin, Thorin Oakenshield, Dwalin, Ely, Ely, to Erebor, uh, you'll go ahead and start the Arcan Guard spawn in Erebor, which is some of the strongest units that they can get. However, the trip is long and perilous. 
The last one is a little bit harder to get, as you will need to go ahead and reclaim Moria from the Goblin player. So if you're able to go ahead and claim uh, the 21st Hall here uh, from the uh, Goblin or Mordor player, you will not only get uh, gold, but you'll also start the um, spawn for the Khazad-Doom veterans. And uh, th those are also some of their best units alongside with the Arkham Guard. Some of the other quests available to the Dwarves, um, starting with their HP buffs, uh, the first one would be to go ahead and kill uh, the Ruined Town Centers. Go ahead and get one of their HP buffs. Another would be to go ahead and kill Azog. Uh, somewhere. There you are. So once you kill Azog, you will also gain uh, an HP buff. Killing the Fortress of Dol Guldur as well. And all of these, along with retaking Moria, will grant them an HP buff. Uh, killing the other goblin heroes, such as Balg and the Goblin King, will also significantly buff the dwarven heroes, specifically Thorn's company. Killing Smaug will also give a large buff to Bard, very deadly. If you're able to bring Th uh, Thorn Oakenshield and Gandalf to Rivendale alongside with Elrond, um, Elrond will uh, identify the swords of Thorn and Gandalf, buffing both of them. And of course, since the Dwarven player has Gimli, they also have all the fellowship quests um, that they can take part in. The first is to get Gimli along with the other players' heroes, such as Aragorn, Boromir, Legolas, Galadriel, Merry, Pepin, Sam, and Frodo to Lothlorien, so that they can all get uh, buffed. The next is to get Gimli, along with Theoden, Gamling, Aragorn, Legolas, and Haldir, to the Hornburg, so that the Elven player can go ahead and get some very strong archers to help defend against Isengard. So after one hour game time after Strider is revealed to be Aragorn, you can bring Gimli, along with Aragorn, Legolas, and Elrond, to Dunharrow, to go ahead and open the Baths of the Dead. Once open, you can bring Gimli along with Legolas and Aragorn to the King of the Dead over here, so that you, the uh, Gondor player can go ahead and claim the Army of the Dead. So as you can see, dwarves are also very spread out, but their fortresses are quite difficult to take, especially with two siege workshops. Unfortunately, there aren't too many resources in the fortresses to take advantage of, so make sure that you secure an area for an economy. Um, I highly recommend either by the Blue Mountains, or in Mirkwood. Uh, because of the chieftains, uh, the dwarves are actually quite good with dealing with cavalry armors, uh, armies, and of course they should have a lot of this siege weapons to go ahead and back them up, especially considering that uh, they do have double siege workshops. Fortunately, due to the uh, goblins and mortar having very strong siege onagers, uh, you might actually need to go ahead and trave effectively, despite having two uh, siege workshops, to stop their pushes. Uh, keeping Fort Noss should be a priority, uh, but the elf player may go ahead and help you in that endeavor. Uh, keeping Late Town, uh, as you'll know, is um, almost impossible, but isn't a terrible loss should you lose it. Um, as yellow, you can go ahead and hit the Mordor and Rune economies, especially over here by the uh, Dead Marshes, where you can go ahead and significantly stop their pushes or their resources and keep orange occupied enough that they're not able to go ahead and produce elephants in the south. Yellow, of course, has lots of places that they can go ahead, and their siege workshop should enable uh, to push back against the siege engines of the other players. I think that's it for the dwarves. Um, this was the last player to go ahead and cover for this map. I hope you've enjoyed the series, and it was useful to go ahead and understand the quests for the different players, as well as their goals, and uh, maybe made you a better player on this map. I'll see you next time with another video.